This, uh, this is what's supposed to be our, or considered our 10th class in Al-Usul Al-Thalatha. We uh, took the four fundamental principles, introductory principles, that the book starts off with. The first one was knowledge and its definition. The second one is applying knowledge. The third one is, which we took and finished last week, conveying knowledge. And what we'll take today is the fourth one. Then, inshallah, we'll take the proof. We most likely are not going to finish it today, so we'll probably have today and next week on the fourth one. Inshallah ta'ala. So the, the fourth one is patience. The author says, As-sabru ala al-adha fi. As-sabru ala al-adha fi. Patience in attaining knowledge. Of course you need patience for that. Uh, attaining and conveying knowledge, you have to have patience for that. That's why a lot of people fall off the wagon. Uh, Abu Ubay spent four, 40 years writing his collection, Gharib al-Hadith. Ibn Abd al-Bar spent 30 years writing his book, Al-Tamheed. The, the book, you, you know, Fath al-Bari that we quote a lot by Ibn Hajar. He spent 23 years writing and revising in uh, that book. So you need patience in attaining and conveying knowledge. You need patience in application of knowledge. The second one. You need a, a, a patience in da'wah to Allah. Patience goes all to all that. However, the statement of the author here is geared a little bit more specifically to patience in da'wah to Allah. The third matter. The one we just mentioned. Because he says, patience in harm that you endure. And usually, the, star, the harm that you endure usually becomes, comes when you start giving da'wah to Allah. Because of da'ayah, he calls people on to change and liberate themselves from their desires. The desires that are embedded within them. Some evil traditions that have become part of them. They become part of them like their flesh and blood. Their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents were doing it. Adaya calls people on to leave the evil matters and follow regulations. And that's always difficult to do. Follow regulations set forth by Allah. Sometimes they never even, even heard of them before. It's difficult for people to change their nature. So what they usually do is resist and oppose and take it on the messenger. And take it on the messenger just trying to convey that to him. Therefore Adaya, a real Muslim for that matter, has the option. I'll leave da'wah or I'll leave aspects of my Islam. That's an option. Which of course is not an option to a believer. So leaving aspects of your Islam like a niqabiyya or hijab or uh, beard or salah because one's ridiculed or mocked or something happens to him in that matter. That's not an option for a believer. And likewise leaving da'wah, leaving da'wah is also and should not be an option. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, Al-Mu'min, al-ladhi yukhalat al-nas, wa yasbir ala adhahum khayrun min al-mu'min, al-ladhi la yukhalat al-nas, wa la yasbir ala adhahum. The Prophet ﷺ said, a believer who mix and mingles with people for da'wah, teaching them, and he's patient over their harm, because they're going to harm him, is better than a believer who goes into solitary in his house and does not, is not patient over, the, uh, over their harm. So the other option is, the, the solution is, the cure to the matter is, is to get acquainted with something called sabr. Everyone needs it, but a da'iyah who calls onto Islam with his actions, whether it's with his sayings, whether it's his actions, whether it's in, many, in, in any of the many different means of da'wah, he needs sabr. A da'iyah is in dire and desperate need of sabr. Sabr is his, is, is his brightness in his heart, his brightness in his heart that never dims. Patience, a sabr for a da'iyah, jawadun la yakbu, it's a steed that doesn't stumble. A sabr for a da'iyah is jundun la yuhzam, it's a military or an army, an undefeated army. A sabr for a da'iyah is an undemolishable fortress, is a husnun la yuhdam. So that is sabr for a da'iyah. You need it for a practicing believer. Of course, every believer is supposed to be practicing. But today, with our circumstances, you have to add practicing believer. Next point. What do you get out of patience? Patience is an unpenetrable armor and a shield. A da'iyah uses patience like a soldier 
And a military soldier uses an armor or a helmet or a bulletproof vest. That's a da'ya uses patient in the same way a, a, a military soldier uses that. Allah said, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا If you remain patient and steadfast and a muttaqi, their harm, their cunning, their conspiracy will not harm you. It's an honor for one who's patient that Allah says with him, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah is with those who preserve patience. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Okay, there's two types of ma'iyya. There's two types of accompanying of Allah. The first one is the general. General accompanying of Allah. Ma'iyya General accompanying of Allah. Which is Allah's knowledge over this whole universe. Then you have the special honorary accompanying of Allah. And that's what me and you need. And that's what me and you strive for. The first one is for everybody. The second one is only for a selected few individuals. Who are they? In Surah Al-Mujadala, Allah said, أَلَمْ تَرَى أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مَا يَكُونُ مِنْ نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعْهُمْ أَيْنَمَا كَانُوا ثُمَّ يُنَبِّهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Allah said, Allah knows what's ever in the heaven and the earth. Knowledge, His knowledge accompanies everything. مَا يَكُونُ مِنْ نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ There's not, نَجْوَى means secret. There's no secret between three except Allah is their fourth. With His knowledge. Allah as we're going to talk about in future, in the future Tawheed classes. Allah is above His throne. We established it many times. Allah is above His throne. Allah is above the seven heavens, above His throne. الرحمن على العرش استوى This verse means with his knowledge. There's no three that have a secret except Allah is their, their fourth with his knowledge. Nor five except Allah is their sixth with his knowledge. Nor any more than that or any less than that except Allah is with them. This is the general accompanying of Allah. Surah Al-Mujadala likewise. So you know when you read the Quran which is the general accompanying of Allah and the special accompanying of Allah. Surah Al-Mujadala. هو الذي خلقه. السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يعلم ما يلج في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو معكم أينما كنتم الله بما تعملون بصير. This summary of the verse, the summary of the verse, he is with you by his knowledge wherever you may be. He is with you with his knowledge wherever you may be. General for everyone, believer, non-believer, muttaqi, wherever you may be, Allah is with you. General in Surah Al-Talaq. الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد حاط بكل شيء علما. Allah surrounds all things with His knowledge. The summary. Allah surrounds everything with His knowledge. أحاط بكل شيء علما. This is the general. General. معية عامة. Now take the معية خاصة. The special honorary accompanying of Allah with His knowledge to you. معية خاصة. اصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين. In سورة الأنفال الله said be patient. Allah is with those who are patient. In سورة التوبة لا تحزن. ثاني اثنين ذو ما في الغارد يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا. When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was in the cave fleeing to Mecca, from مكة to Medina, he told Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه لا تحزن. Don't be sad. Don't be afraid. Don't grieve. Allah is with us. Special honorary. Honorary accompanying of Allah. When Allah sent Musa and Harun in Surah Al-Taha, إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعْ وَأَرَى I'm with you both. I can hear you and I can see you. مَعَيَّ خَاصَّ بِالْمُؤْمِنْ تَأْتِ فِي سِيَاقِ الْمَدِحِ وَالثَّنَامِ For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in the cave, for Musa and Harun, we sent them to Fir'aun. For الصابرون, anyone who's sabir, special accompanying of Allah, with his knowledge, special, honorary, for special people. It's a compliment, it's a praise, it's a su support from Allah. That's what me and you need. If we want that special accompanying of Allah with his knowledge to look out for us, we need to do it, we gain it by having patience. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. The special, honorary, complimentary accompanying of Allah for those who are patient. More reward for those who are patient. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Focus on these two ayat with me. Allah loves those who are patient. The first one is, 
Allah is with those who are patient. Allah loves those who are patient. Two ayat. Take these two ayat and put aside 88 other ayat in the Quran that talk about patience. If, 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 Imam Ahmad is quoted as saying there's 90 ayat in the Quran that mention or talk about patience. You take these two. If you take these two and contemplate and think, if you know Allah is with you, the special, honorary, accompanying of Allah, al-ma'iyya al-khassa, you know Allah loves you from the second verse, you know Allah is with you from the first verse, you know Allah loves you from the second verse, if you let it register and believe it in your mind, you know that He accompanies you with His knowledge, the special honorary way, then how could you ever be afraid or feel lonely? If Allah is with you, and you feel it, and you let it sink in, and you know Allah is with you, how could you ever be afraid or, lon or lonely? And if you know Allah loves you from the second verse, then how could you ever grieve or worry? If Allah loves you, how could you grieve or worry? You want the glad tiding from Allah? Then get it through sabr. قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون ولا نبل ونكم certainly you're going to be tested you're going to be tested with fear you're going to be tested with hunger loss of wealth you're going to be tested with loss of fruits but have the glad but have the glad tidings for those who are patient وبشر الصابرين they have a glad tidings who are they الصابرين the ones who say إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون you want the angels to enter on you in Jannah from all the gates Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fanima akubaddar. The angels enter on to them, to you, inshallah. To us, the angels will enter upon you saying, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. You preserved patient. Excellent indeed is the final home. The outcome has been excellent. Why? Why did they greet them? They said, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. You, they gave them the salam based on the quality of their patience. In Surah Al-Zumar, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those who are patient get, receive their full reward without any reckoning. You get abundance amount of reward for patience. When someone generous says, I got you, I got to save for you, you know that there's a lot. Imagine Al-Kareem, the ultimate in his generosity says, you patient, يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرًا Abundance in reward. In Surah Al-Sajda, we made from them, from among them, leaders guided by our command when they were, when they were patient and they were certain of our signs. When did they become imams? When they were patient and certain. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al-Qayyim, Al-Jawziyyah, and uh, Ibn Kathir say statements similar to that which بِالصَّبْرِ وَالْيَقِينَ تُنَالَ الْإِمَامَ بِالدِّينَ With patience and certainty, one obtains leadership in religion. With patience and certainty, one obtains uh, uh, leadership in religion. Patience with certainty, tie them together. If patience and certainty are tied into a knot, you get leadership. That knot is leadership in Islam. What's sabr? What's the definition of sabr? Lughatan, linguistically speaking, al-habsu wal man. Linguistically, it's to ban or prevent. Ban and prevent or ban or prevent. Al-habsu wal man. Ban and prevent yourself from despondency and anxiety. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله To prevent yourself from being despondent or being, having anxiety. To ban and prevent your limbs from committing sins. That's sabr. To ban and prevent your tongue from complaining. Patience with no exaggeration. Patience with no exaggeration is a methodology. It's not mere words said when one is afflicted. Wallah, I'm patient. That's after he said something to anger Allah at him. Then at the end he says, Wallah, I'm patient. إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَىٰ Patience has its teachings, its rules and regulations. That's patience. 
So does complaining, since we said it's, it's the entire way of teaching, the next point would be, is complaining, negating, sabr? When I complain, does it negate sabr? The answer to that is complaining is two false. The first one is bad, and the other one is actually a complimentary, a good way of complaining. One should never complain Allah to his creations. You complain to Allah. And that complaining to Allah is a sign of strong iman. Yaqub, السلام, the father of Yusuf, after the trials he, said, he went through, he said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ In the initial start, beginning of it, he said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Beautiful patience. And beautiful patience is patience with no complaining. So he said, I'm determined to have beautiful patience, patience with no complaint. I'm not going to complain. You don't preserve patience so that people can say, Wallahi, so and so is patient. Nor do you preserve patience so people can say, Wallahi, wasn't despondent. Even though he said, Fasabrun Jameel, and Allah quoted it in the Quran, Fasabrun Jameel, after the news of what happened to his son, he still complained. Yaqub still complained. But he said, Fasabrun Jameel, which is patience with no complaining, but he still complained. He clearly said it. In fact, he said, I complained. But he said, I complained to Allah. Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ilallah. I only. Innama, verily, only, I limit it. Innama ashku bathi, I complain my grief, my sorrow, what I feel in my heart, to Allah. وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And I know that of Allah, which you do not know. Complaining to Allah does not negate your patience. Complain your poverty to Allah. Complain your worries, your anxiety, your weaknesses. Complain that all to Allah. That has nothing to do with negating your patience. Complain all that which is in your heart. Empty your heart out to Allah. Cast what's in your heart in all humbleness and humility to Allah and watch the results you're going to get. Ayyub. Ayyub, a man declared by Allah. Allah, the judge of all judges, declared Ayyub and said about him, Inna wajadna sabira ni'mal abd. إنه أواب. Allah, Allah truly says, truly, we found him, Ayyub, patient. Declaration by Allah. How excellent of a slave he was. Verily, he was off returning in repentance. That's the meaning of Awab, one who continu continuously repents. But the point of it is the beginning. Truly, we found him patient. Truly, who said that? Allah, إِنَّا وَجِدْنَا We found him patient. Who found him? Who found Ayyub patient? Allah the Almighty found him. He still complained. Allah declared him patient, but he still complained. His complaining to Allah was among the factors that gave him the honor of being certified by Allah as having been found to be patient. He complained to Allah. <laughs> Look at the delicate words that Ayyub used. Massani. <laughs> Massani. I've been touched. Destroyed me, doomed me, ahlakani. He didn't use any of those words. He said, I've been touched. Touch, a little bit of touch of hardship. I've been touched with problems. What problems did he, was he touched? Every one of you, we don't need to go through them. Every one of you knows what that, it, he's an example of one who is patient. And even though he lost his wealth, oh, and he lost all his wealth, he lost all his family, children except his wife. He lost his health. He was in the bed. He was in an illness in the bed. He says, Messen. All that is in for not for a day or two, for years and years. When he complained to Allah, he says, Messeni al-Dur. Because people are worse off than him. Anni Messeni al-Dur. I've been touched with an affliction. So he complained, but he complained in a humble way. He said, He declared, Allah declared him to be one who was found to be patient. The sinful, the wrong type of complaining, the one that negates your patient, is complaining the creator to one who's created, the provider to one who's being provided, to complain the most merciful, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, to a human who's deficient or lacks mercy in totality. 
Does it make sense? Does it ever make sense to any of you? Look, look at it when you want to sit and complain to people. Does it make sense to you to complain to one who's deficient in mercy or doesn't even have mercy? And leave the one who's perfect and complete and ultimate in his mercy? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the most gracious, the most merciful. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, said, complaining is three levels. Levels, three levels. The first one is, the most despicable is complaining about Allah to his creation. Why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? Why this? Changing your belief, changing your ways. The second one is the best level, which is complaining matters to Allah. The third one is in the middle, which is complaining creation to the creator. So the second two are good, are okay. The first one is the one that negates patience. What are the types of patience? And I'm not going to go through this. This is, like I said, a brief outline uh, that we need to talk about, about patience. I gave a lecture, and it's available on patience, which talks in depth about trials and tribulation. Uh, you got the sabr ala ta'a wal ma'mur. Patience to do the obligatory, the, what, that which you're ordered to do. Sabr an al masiya patience to refrain from the sin. The first two, like waking up for fajr. Long day of working, you probably slept late at night, you probably did qiyam, then suddenly fajr comes, you gotta wake up again for fajr, or someone is next to his wife in the comfort of his bed, and his wife is next to him. He leaves that to go and make his salah, salat al-fajr or salat al-nafila, to turn away from that, that dream house, or that house that you want to shelter your family in, because you don't want to get into usury and riba. riba. Uh, to stop your tongue from what's become the fruit of the settings today, riba and namima, to stop your tongue from that, it needs a lot of patience. So those are the first two types of patience. The third one is patience on that which Allah destined for you of trials and tribulations. الصبر على البلاء والمقدور ألف لام ميم حسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم ألف لام ميم Do you people think that they will be, people will be left alone and not be tested? You think you will say we believe and you will not be tested? In Surah Al-Ankabut We indeed tested those before you You're not any better than those before you We tested those before you So Allah will certainly make it known those who are people of truth and those who are not. Iman is not a word you utter. It's not a word you say on your tongue alone. Iman is tongue, heart, and action. Why does Allah test us? Why does Allah test us? He said it in the Quran. مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَمِيزَ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Allah will not leave the believers in the state which they're in. Hatta until Yamiza al Khabitha min al Tayyib. Until he distinguishes the wicked from the good. Allah has wisdom behind matters. You're tested. Sometimes you know the wisdom. Sometimes you know. You don't know it. That's what Allah means when He said, Sometimes you don't know it. You don't know the ghayb. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُطْلَعَكُمْ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَجْتَبِي مِنْ رُسُلِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَإِنْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَلَكُمْ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah will not disclose that. But believe in Allah and His Messenger. And if you do, you get abundance and reward. آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَإِنْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَلَكُمْ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Believe in Allah and His Messenger. You do. That's the point of it. Stay steadfast. No matter what happens of you, the point of it, he's, he's saying at the end of the verse, to remain on the right path of the Allah and the messengers of Allah. Allah tests people of Iman to distinguish between the truth and a liar. Look at that. Until he distinguishes the wicked from the good. He distinguishes the wicked from the good through trials and tribulations and tests, whether it may be financial ones or... Problems with health or problems with uh, 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 business. And it could be problems tested with matters for one's deen. And that's the ultimate kind of test. In Surah Ali Imran, a second time, a very similar verse. 
ليميز الله الخبيث من الطيب ويجعل الخبيث بعضه على بعض فيركمه جميعا فيجعله في جهنم أولئك هم الخاسرون in order that Allah will distinguish the wicked from the good the wicked from the good and look at that and he'll stockpile the filth on top of each other trials and tribulations matter that happened fitan that happened recently in the past 10 15 years stockpile the filth on one side and stockpile the righteous people on one side you can see and tell the dua you can tell filth is filth and you can tell the righteous is righteous liyamiz allah al khabith for us and for allah and we're going to talk about that in in a little bit more detail there are those who when they're touched with any harm Suddenly their appearance changes, their methodology changes with their appearance. Clipping and trimming that which used to be an untouchable far, so suddenly now is a sunnah and even lesser than a sunnah. Wala and bara used to be defined in one thing, and now and alhamdulillah things are recorded, you can see it. Now suddenly wala and bara is a totally different thing. Some may not say, why Allah did you do that? No, that's, some people fail the test. That's the ignorant layman people are failing. This. Why Allah did you do it? Others may change their beliefs and principles and begin to compromise their principles. Those who went to prison and came out totally different. Those who went trial came out before. Look at them and look at their audio and video and their talks and their articles before the trials and look at it today. Hasib al Naso and Yutra stockpile filth on top of each other and stockpile the righteous on top of each other. He may not have said, Why Allah did you do this to me? He may have not said, complained, why did this happen to me? But he's a different man in his belief. He changed his belief. Those are filth not worthy of being carriers of the da'wah of Allah Ta'ala. Liyamiz Allah al Khabitha min al Tayyib. Don't ever expect da'wah. Or da let me phrase. Don't ever expect that on the correct manhaj to be paved with red carpet and flowers. Don't ever expect that. Don't ever expect it to be paved with uh, flowers and red carpet and lead you to a life of comfort and luxury. Estab establish yourself from now that you need iman and sabr to endure hardships if you're on the right path of da'wah. We said that in the University of Yusuf alayhi salam, the seminar I gave. Don't ever ask Allah for a trial ever. Rather, ask Allah to save you from trials, but establish when in yourself, Iman and Sabrin, that only comes through knowledge, that's why we learn knowledge, that's why we learn knowledge, so when the trial comes, you don't fail. Wallahi, I can number names, names with that, when they were inflicted with trials, and how they failed, of our time, and popular people, and people that you may have heard in the media. Don't ever be like those who were nasi man Allah ala harb. And among mankind is those who worship Allah as they were on, on the edge. You see if you're walking on the edge of a cliff, like a narrow place, like on the edge of this table. If good befalls them, ah, I'm a believer, I'm content. If good, good, everything's going his for, for, uh, way. If a trial befalls him, in He turns back on his face, losing both this world and the hereafter. He lost this world, and by him not being pleased that with Allah, what Allah chose with him, he lost the life after. Allahumma thabbitna. Allahumma thabbitna. If he gets what he wants of wealth, and fame, and money, and prestige, and followers, he's with the general flow of the believers. If a test comes, suddenly a test comes, he leaves that path. You hear people now saying, Dua, I want to live happy. I want to go back to my wife and kids. I don't want problems no more. Uh, fitan happened and, and they didn't even see fitan. They didn't even see fitan. It didn't even come near them. They didn't even smell it. You're going to hear someone say, this da'wah isn't, uh, isn't for me. I just heard it actually a few days ago. If I'm going to be scrutinized for going to the masjid, I'm not going to the masjid no more. أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون أداعي مسلم follows the guided path and he accepts the baggage that comes with it. أداعي accept the right path and the baggage that comes with it. Whatever outcome Allah has for him, he takes it with an open heart and a bare chest. He takes it with an open heart and a bare chest. Shout and I'm a believer. ولا قد فتن الذين من قبلهم. And we indeed tested those who were before them. You're not any better than them. We indeed tested those before you. We indeed tested those before you. Allah no one wants to know those who are, and we're going to talk about what that means. Allah wants to know those who are truthful and those who are liars. The prophets get tested and they get harmed. You're going to get harmed and tested. 
comfort, luxury, red carpets in the path of da'wah, it didn't happen to a single messenger of Ulil Azam. It didn't happen from Ulil Azam, the most beloved, to Allah of his creation. It didn't even happen to any of the other messengers. And who do we look up to when we say da'wah? When you say da'wah, who's our example da'wah? The messengers of Allah. Do you know any messenger of Allah that didn't live a life of hardship from beginning to end? Those, those are the ideal examples that one looks up to da'wah. Now you see those who made da'wah a job, a career, for fame, for luxury, for going with whatever the trend of that time is, whatever makes you popular at that time, that's what their ideology is. That's what their deen, that's their religion, is whatever is that. If you're on the right path and you have no enemies and you have no trial, then close the door in your house and double check what you're doing. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ In Surah Al-An'am وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوا فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ We appointed for every prophet For every prophet لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا Shayateen, devils. Oh, someone said sh shayateen. Look what Allah specified. Not shayateen, only shayateen of jinn. Allah specified shayateen al insi wal jinn. Mankind and of jinn. So no one will say it was about the jinn. In shayateen al insi, inspiring to each other, adorned speech as a delusion. Walaw sha'a rabbuka ma fa'alu. If Allah didn't want, they, were, were, they wouldn't have done it. Fadharhum wa ma yaftarun. In Surah Al Furqan, a very similar verse like this one. In addition to the one Surah Al-An'am. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ هَادِيًا وَنَصِيرًا We make for every prophet, لِكُلِّ Prophet, enemies. He has to have enemies. The sunnah of Allah. You can't change the sunnah of Allah. Disbelievers, polyists, criminals. Today you have the modernists and, and those who, you know, Allahu A'lam what they are. Allah said, لِكُلِّ Every. This is for who? Me and you? It's for those who are better than me and you. The examples of da'wah. If Allah appointed for every prophet of Il al azim and every other prophet after that, enemies, you expect a true Muslim on the true path to be free of enemies and problems and hardships and trials and tribulations. Explain that to me. Those fake ignorant heads we have today, the ones we see, the ones we, who assume, they, they have this assumption that they can get everyone to be pleased at them. And everyone in their imaginary mind, they can get them into some big circle of unity. They think they're the new Messiah with such savior powers and knowledge to get everyone in this circle, which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa didn't have. Everyone should be happy together and we're on the same page. And they, they want to bring the world together on the wrong pretext and on the account of displeasing Allah. Those need to learn the basics of da'wah. They're not, not basics of da'wah, but rather before that, the basics of their deen. When you embrace da'wah and you're effective on the true manhaj, on the true belief, you must have enemies. And in a time like today, you're, if your speech is true and your tawheed is pure, you're going to have enemies from those who claim to be Muslims before the non-Muslims. Was it mentioned in the Quran in vain? Two times. In Inna Ladina Ajram. Kadu Bila Ladina Amma. We all know it in Surah Al in, in, in Juzu Amma. We all read Juzu Amma and we all memorize it. Inna Ladina Ajram. But do we contemplate it? Inna Ladina Ajram. Very those who uh, in this life committed crimes used to laugh at the believers. Inna Ladina Ajram. Kanu Mina Ladina Amma. Yad Hakun. Wa Ida Maru Bihim Yatagamazun. Whenever they pass by the believers, they wink one at each other in mockery. This was talking about the non-believers doing it to the believers. Today we have those who claim to be believers doing it to the righteous believers of Tawheed. When they return to their people, they return just in. And when they saw them, when they see them, they say, Verily, these guys have been gone astray. They see the righteous people of Tawheed, the strangers. The strangers, the true people on the pure Tawheed today are strangers among strangers among strangers. Those who are on the true Tawheed, verily, have gone astray, for example. Verily, they've, how is that? How is that? You know what, Dalun? They're deviants. He's a takfiri. 
He's a khawarij. They threw their labels at him. Okay, you call them these names. Come here, buddy. What's the definition, the scholarly definition of a takfiri? They couldn't tell you. They couldn't tell you. What's the characteristics that the scholars, the ulama mentioned, the ulama of the salaf, and a khawarij? They don't know. They, 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 what happens is, they hear the crowing of the roosters, and they begin to crow with it. I'm not going to say, I'm going to have a little bit more respect and say, they heard the dogs barking, so they began to bark like the dogs. I'm going to say, they heard the crowing of the roosters, so they crow like them. Printed labels ready to be uttered at a moment's notice, without fear of Allah. You see, you as a believer, if you're on the true path, you're steadfast, you're going to be tested. And you need patience. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَضْحَكُونَ Verily, during the world before, those who committed the crime used to laugh at those who believed. Keep these ayat between your eyes. When you struggle, when people complain to me, oh, I'm facing this, I'm facing that. Yes, yes, it's good to consult, but keep these ayat and complain to them. When you're on the guided path and they throw labels at you, and you're sure you're on the path of the Quran and the Sunnah, following the Sahaba and those who follow them in guidance, they mark you, they're happy about you, Pay attention to they, they make fun of you, they harm you. Allah says, So what's the result of impatient? Wait for this day. Allah tells you, wait for this day. This day, the life after, we're not gonna mock no one now in this life. But in the life after, those who believe will laugh. At the disbelievers, those who mocked you, then you can mock them back and laugh at them. Ibn al-Mubarak said, Al-Kalbi narrated from Abi Salih about the verse of Allah, Allah yastahzi'u bihim, Allah mocks them. He said, Abu Salih said, this is the statement of Abu Salih, the torment is for, in addition to the regular torment they get in hell, the, the gates of hell open and they're told to leave. And they quickly, the people in hell quickly head to the doors. When they reach the doors, the gates close. The gates of hell close as part of their punishment. When the believers see them, they begin to laugh at them. There's, there's windows in Jannah that they see the people in hell. And that's what he said. Abu Salih said, that's the meaning of That's the day when the believers will laugh at them. Wallahi, there's nothing I look more forward to. Wallahi, there's nothing I look more forward to. Then the day we are, inshallah, called to an appointment to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing I look forward to. The second thing I look to in Jan forward to in Jannah is the pleasant view from the windows of Jannah and the thrones of Al-Ara'ik. فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ With glasses of yogurt and honey and water and looking those in Jahannam who for so long relentlessly tortured and harmed and mocked and killed us. May Allah forgive our sins and keep us steadfast on the straight path so we can get those ranks and levels, inshallah ta'ala. We don't mock in this life, but there's, because there's a chance of repentance. There's always a chance to repent and come back to the right path. But there's a time in the life after where even if it's a relative, where even if it's a relative, you're not going to feel any guilt for mocking him. Ala al araiki they get paid fully for what they used to do. You, you, you're gonna, you get, it's payback time. They get really, you mocked, you get mocked. The life after. It's, as, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us on al araik overlooking those people who did this to us, inshallah ta'ala. In conclusion, not a single messenger or Muslim or reviver who took on this task except he was tested. That's the sunnah of Allah. So we need to strengthen our sabr, work on our sabr, and that only comes through knowledge. So we mean, so, or, or some may need to jump off the wagon, and I don't suggest that, but that's the only two ultimatums. And I suggest sabr and knowledge. May Allah keep us steadfast and away from misguidance, inshallah. Look at some of the verses on trials. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ لَامْ وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ لَامْ لِلتَّوْكِيلِ the certainly, certainly it's going to happen. Lam, assured, be assured it's going to happen. 
Lamb of oath. This is also considered a lamb of oath. Wallahi lanabluwa. Wallahi, Allah gives an oath. Wallahi, you're going to be tested. And it's right after that, uh, it's the noon, the heavy noon. These are matters consistent throughout the Quran. Look. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ In Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Muhammad. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْلَمَ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَنَبْلُوا أَخْبَارَكُمْ In Surah Al-Umran. لَتُبْلَوَنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ Same lamb. Lamb al-Tawkeed or lamb al-Qasam. لَتُبْلَوَنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ You shall certainly be tried and tested in your wealth and in your property and your, your personal selves. وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ Look at the second part of it. وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ The other one. Lam is certain. It's eminent. لَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا And you should certainly hear much that which grieves you from those who received the scripture before. And those who ascribe partners to Allah. وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا So how, Ya Allah, we deal with it? It's in the same verse how we deal with it. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ From, How do we deal with it? Allah didn't leave us hanging. If you preserve patiently and you have taqwa, just like the pre previous verses we took, then that is a determining factor in all affairs. It's a determining factor in your success in the life after. It's not necessary to see the fruit of your da'wah in this life. It, some people want to see the ultimate victory. The ultimate victory is to die patient and firm on the right path. And that's what we ask for. That's why we continuously ask Allah to keep us steadfast and firm on the right and pure tawheed. The believers endured so much, and the messengers endured so much of trials and tribulation that Allah gave. Among the examples is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He endured so much that Allah sent condolence to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that which he endured. وَلَقَدْ كُذِّبَتْ رُسُلٌ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was agonized over that which hurt him, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, messengers before you were denied. Messengers before you, they disbelieved in, were harmed. فَصَبَرُوا What did they do? فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا they were patient in the denial they faced. They were patient in the trials they faced. And they were tested, harmed, and they were hurt. Till our victory reached them. There's no way around it. As a da'i, I know this. Read the verse. There's no one who changes it. So if you're expecting a life with no hardships and trials, there's no one who can change the word of Allah. The victory is going to come for sure. And also the test before is going to come. You can't change the sunnah and trends of Allah. A da'i is going to be touched with harm. And it's the sunnah of Allah. There's no way around it. Do you remember our series on the graduates of Yusuf? The most honorable ulama. And I mentioned in there that if you, they were stricken with grief and hardships. And we mentioned how uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, and uh, 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 the four imams, how they were stricken with grief and hardship. And their life was trial after trial. And if you also go on further to read the books like that of Sira Alam and Nubala, the heroes of Islam in Sira Alam and Nubala, or uh, other books, volumes of books that mention the history of the revivers. Perhaps someone can enlighten me of one of the revivers of Islam, the prominent people that we mention day, time and time, tens of times in our halaqat, one of those which history documented that didn't go through trials throughout his life. Was it a coincidence they all went through trials? No. Allah says finally, surely it reached you the news of the people before you. This is the news of the messengers before you. Meaning what happened to the messengers before you, happened to you. They were tested and tried, and then they got the victory, and the same happens to you. Contemplate the history. Beloved, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
contemplate trials after trials after he's Allah telling them to contemplate the history of the previous messengers how they went through trials and then victory trials that the Prophet وسلم, went through in da'wah and his personal life one after another one overlap in the other so desperately that he had to hear from Allah فاصبر. order order in him to be patient direct order by Allah to be patient more than 11, at least 11 times in the Quran فاصبر. Muhammad وسلم, Allah says فاصبر إن العاقبة للمتقين. in Surah Hud Allah says فاصبر. be patient the end, the destiny, because a lot of times when one goes through trials and one sees the ummah that it's in, he forgets that the victory, there's a victory coming. Fasbir, in the end in destiny is for muttaqeen. Fasbir ala ma yaqulun. Be patient over what they say. Be patient because you're going to hear a lot of stuff that's going to be talked about you. If you sit in your house, you're not going to hear no one talk about Go to the da'wah front, you're going to hear every last thing about your own self, that which makes you doubt your own self at times. فاصبر على ما يقولون فاصبر إن وعد سورة الروم again فاصبر إن وعد الله حق فاصبر إن وعد الله حق إن سورة غافر إن في سورة غافر a second time فاصبر إنه three times فاصبر إن وعد الله حق why did Allah repeat it in vain there's not a single da in the Quran that's repeated in vain the the, the catastrophic climate calamities Befall on a believer. So Allah wanted to repeat it again and again. So you read it again and again and understand the solution is fasbir. Allah says in Surah Al-Insan to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we revealed to you this Quran. We revealed you, to you this Quran in stages. Tanzila means in stages. Okay. The, the really, what you would imagine the next verse after that is, so thank Allah. He revealed the Quran, he honored you with the Quran, so thank Allah. The next verse after that, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ Be patient. It's not thank Allah, it's فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ And Allah commands you to preserve patience to that which Allah has, 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 has in destiny for you. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ In Surah Al-Qalam, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ Be patient to the decision, to that which Allah has for you. For, uh, to the decision Allah has, don't be like the companion of the fish. Meaning don't leave da'wah. When all the problems happen, don't just walk away. Just like Yunus did in, in Al-Ahqaf. فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُ الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Be patient O Muhammad, like the strong will messenger did. فَاصْبِرْ He wants to remind them of the messengers. Be patient like they did. It's not an easy task. It's, if it was an easy task, everyone would be on this task, on, on, this, on this path. It's a task paved with hardship and, 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 and thorns. It's a task and it's a path paved with extreme hardships. But it's the way that leads you to Firdaus. The other path is a path paved with ease and red carpet, but it leads to an unpleasant destiny. And you don't want to go that other way. Even though it looks good, you don't want to go that way. You want to go to the way that may seem difficult, but it gets you to the right place. Today, a tiny bit of thing that happens to people these days. So suddenly he's in doubt of his religion. He's looking in the rear view mirror to make a U-turn out of the guided path. Tiny bit. When the dirt is placed on your head, then maybe you can complain. When the guts of a camel are thrown on you and people began to fall in weakness of laughter over each other, then possibly you can nag and speak about it. When one of you is choked, to near suffocation, and Abu Bakr has to come and rescue you, radiallahu anh, when has, he has to rescue you from a beating to near death, then one can talk. When they put you in a siege, like they did to the Prophet said, you can call it a siege, you can call it a prison, you can call it a concentration camp, call it all that. When the Prophet sallallahu was in Shaib Abu Talib, or you can call it, what well, it's considered a concentration camp, and it's considered a siege, and it's considered a, a prison. It was more like a prison. If you look, read the details of how it was, they tried to discredit him and call him a fraud. The Prophet ﷺ, a fraud. A fraud on a human being, that's a little rank. A fraud on Allah the Almighty. They called him insane, a madman, a majnoon. Wallahi, I know low life scums and bums, criminals who are who killed and murdered, who are willing to spend the rest of their life in prison, 
rather than take a plea deal of insanity and walk out after a few years. They'd rather spend their life in prison than to be documented as insane. Their integrity refuses to allow them to consider themselves insane, even if it meant life behind bars. Your prophet gets called a madman, insane. Not only him, but the messengers before him were called the same thing. And to someone to call you crazy, that's really a big thing. And Allah says not only about the Prophet Muhammad even the people, the, the messengers before. Messengers who came before, all of them, their people said, there's people who were following who said about them, sorcerers or madmen. They called our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what would be today an incompetent, insignificant man. Basically, basically, وَالْعِيَادُ billah, a bomb. They called our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that. My life, my life, my soul, my spirit, my family, my wealth be ransomed to our beloved. They called him that. وَإِذَا رَأَوْكَ إِنْ يَتَّخِذُونَكَ إِلَّا هُزُوًا هَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا when they see you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they treat you in mockery, they mock you. And that's difficult when you're mocked and made fun of. Is this the one who Allah sent us? This guy? Allah couldn't find better than this guy? They sit and laugh and say, أَهَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا They scan him up and down in contempt. And they say, Allah couldn't find a better one than this. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنَ عَظِيمٍ Why wasn't a great man out of Mecca chosen? Why wasn't a great man out of Mecca chosen for the Qur'an to be revealed to you? Allah couldn't find better than this. Mentioned in the Qur'an many times. His friends, his friends, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are refugees in Abyssinia, in Africa, in, in the lands of uh, Najashi, uh, Habasha. His friends are refugees in Abyssinia. His other friends are in the hot sun being tortured. He's being pelted with stones. He's wanted as a refugee in a dark cave full of snakes and scorpions with the highest bounty on him and his best friend. His sons, his children, Al-Qasim, Abdullah, Ibrahim, Zainab, Ruqayya, Umm Kalthum, one after the other, all die one after the other. The only one who survives till the end of his life is Fatima and then he gets the news that as soon as he die right after him, he's, she's going to die. He gets that news before when he was alive. Calamity after calamity, trial after trial, both in his personal life and in his da'wah life. It's not just personal, it's also in his da'wah life. It's not just da'wah, it's also in his personal life. Today, one loses a parent, one loses a son, and he never recovers after that ever. He lost all his children, except Fatima. Even in his final moments, departing, he wasn't exempted from hardship. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Mas'ud sees him shaken. In Bukhari, in Muslim, he walks in, Ibn Mas'ud, and he walks when the Prophet ﷺ is on his deathbed and he's shivering. And Ibn Mas'ud puts his head on him and says, Oh Prophet of Allah, you're very ill. He's emotional, Ibn Mas'ud. He said, I get the pain of two. I get the pain of two men. Ibn Mas'ud said, you get the double reward as well? He said, yes, I get the double reward. He gets the wasila too. It's expensive. It's expensive. So you want to be as close to Allah as you can, to the wasila. You want to be as close to the wasila as you can. You want to be as close to Allah's throne as you can. Hold firm on the path, convey it, and be patient. That's the way for it. His noble character in da'wah, the Prophet ﷺ, was patience. If it was revenge he wanted in his stage of da'wah, he would have made an example out of the people of Ta'if. To let the blood of the people of Ta'a flow, flow down, flow down from the mountain peak all the way down to the valleys of Mecca. So that the tribe of Quraysh and all the fractions around it and the whole Arabian Peninsula will hear an unforgettable lesson of that which happened to anyone who violates the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But no, he says, no, leave them. He tells the angels of the mountains who was ready to do this. He says, leave them. Maybe there will become from them those who will worship Allah. Every time he left the scene, take this, because we raise dua, we raise dua here. And we say every time he left the scene of torture in Austin, he was more optimistic and energized to continue in his mission, more sure than ever that he would prevail because he had between his eyes, wasbir. It couldn't come out without wasbir. Fasbir, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave 
the most promising prophecies the Prophet ﷺ gave the most uh, promising prophecies in an inspiration to Sahaba in the darkest time, when they were in the darkest of the tunnel. Ada'iyah, learn from that, Ada'iyah is most optimistic in what people perceive as the most crucial in darkest moments. Ada'iyah is calm and he's assured and he knows victory is right around the corner. And he knows that it's his duty to rescue that ship. In Al Ahzab. Look at the promise and victories in the hardest and darkest time. In Al Ahzab. One of the most difficult times of the Ummah. Cold. Freezing. And if you know the desert of Medina, how, how freezing it is, you know. Rain. Hail. Terrorized. The universe is united against him. They were terrorized. Qatifan. Najd. Murra. Ashja. Quraysh. Tribes from all over, the Jews on the outskirts of Medina betray him in the final moments. In the dark moment, the Prophet ﷺ is optimistic. The world is against him and he says, we're going to be victorious over the superpowers of the Romans. We're going to be victorious over the superpower of the Persians. We're going to be victorious. Over... He said this in the midst of the world united, about to make him extinct. That's the purpose of Al-Ahzab, to make the Prophet and the Sahaba extinct. We're going to be victorious over Sana'a, the, the east, the west, and the center. The world is going to fall under our control. The sick hearted said, you believe a man telling you, he sees the palaces of the superpowers falling under his control. Yeah, he's digging a trench and we can't even defend ourselves. He tells you he's going to rule the world. And we're afraid to step yards away to go urinate. Allah and His Prophet didn't give us nothing but false promises. The firm, the believers in those dark times, every time matter gets worse, their Iman is energized. Every time matters get worse, it boosts their Iman. The rain, their Iman gets stronger. The call, their Iman gets stronger. The tribe betraying them in the final moments and seconds, their Iman gets stronger. The final straw is 10,000 men yards away from them, within yards away from them. This is what we've been fighting for. This is it, this is it. But it's a dark time, but that's what we've been waiting for. A believer, a da'iya, the more he's inflicted, the more he's optimistic about the message, as long as he's on the right path and guided path. Nights don't last forever. Nights are only hours long, and then the daylight breaks. In Sahih Sunan in Tirmidhi, Sa'ad radiallahu an, قال يا رسول الله أي الناس يشد بلاءً He asked the Prophet who's the most tested? If you were to ask me that before learning, the concepts and principles of Islam tell you the sinners, the adulterers, the rapists, the fornicators. That's who's going to get tested. The Prophet said, al -anbiya, thumma al -amthal fal -amthal. The messengers and those who follow them. A man is tested according to his belief. According to his deen. If his deen is firm, that's it. He proved himself. No, if his deen is firm, give him more. He passed to the second level of heaven. Okay, we got to take him to the third level of heaven. He passed the third level of heaven. We want to take him up a level of heaven. He takes him higher to level because Allah loves you. He wants you to be close to the arsh as one can be. وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ If it's, if his deen is not that strong, اِبْتُلِيَ عَلَى حَسْبِ دِينِهِ if his deen is not that strong, then his punishment stops right there. Okay, this guy just gets right inside the door of heaven. That's his place. That's where he, gets, he stays. فَمَا يبرح, Listen to that. فَمَا يَبْرَحُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَتْرُكُهُ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئًا The tests come one after another until a servant leaves this earth with not a single, with not a single sin. Allah wants to purify you, He wants to refine you. He wants you to meet Him pure so you can be close to the Arsh. Refining and burning gold makes it pure. It makes, takes the pure gold out. It purifies one. But gold doesn't come out easy, the pure gold. It comes on 1000 degrees Celsius or more. 
So it needs purification. Allah is refining you. Allah is purifying you. I was talking to a da'ya in UK just hours ago, this morning. And I was encouraging him to give da'wah, to teach people, to teach the youth, because the method of Nur al-Din Zinki and how he raised the generation is the true method. And he told me, every time there's a notice for me to give a lecture, the police in UK cancel the event. I told him, that's better than here. Over here, the Muslims do that. Muslim messages we have here, not a single masjid allows us to teach the usul al-thalatha. We search and we got to pursue and find places to rent classes. We, we don't announce it because we're at capacity. We don't have no room. We have to tell the sisters, leave. And we have how much? I don't even know how many messages we have in our vicinity over here. Maybe 15 or more. Two weeks ago, not a single one invited or allows me to give one single talk there. Two weeks ago, there was a sudden change in a masjid in the officials there. And there was a big event going. So the man, Jazallah Khair, he said, I'm going to invite Sheikh Ahmed. He invited me. He said, uh, 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 I'm going to invite Sheikh Ahmed. He invited me. I said, okay, but you make sure it's, it's okay with the people. As soon as the posters went up with my name, oh, watch out. The American government is after this guy. We don't want him here. How did you guys invite this guy? I say, if there's errors, if they're after any errors, Let's debate. We're open for debate. The debate in arena is big. But since our, after we debate, since our, uh, we're dealing with ignorant heads around us, and modernists, and deviants, and all type of people, uh, uh, after the debate, let's do mubahala as well. And see who's on the wrong. The curse of Allah fall on that who's deviant, and who's wrong, and who chooses a different ideology. There's not a single mistake by the will of Allah that they can find. Alhamdulillah. We're not infallible, but Alhamdulillah. I don't bolster or brag, but if it's time for debate, they will see who is a mockery and who's not. Deluded modernists, people who attack their brothers and support and to please the kuffar, and other times, you, you look left and right at times, you don't find a single supporter. And at times, you, you'll hear... Uh, uh, lots of noise, but there's nobody there. And the situation actually reminds me of the masajid. You can't, what did we mention? We have 10 classes here. Have you heard us mention anything in the Surah al thalatha that's out of, out, of, out of the ordinary? Basic teachings that their kids and their elders should know. But it reminds me of وَجَلْجَلَةُ الْعَمَارِ بِكُلِّ مُحَمَّدِ إِقْبَالِ said وَجَلْجَلَةُ الْعَمَارِ بِكُلِّ حَيٍّ وَلَكِنْ أَيْنَ صَوْتٌ مِنْ بِلَالِ مَنَائِرُكُمْ عَلَتْ فِي كُلِّ حَيٍّ وَمَسْجِدُكُمْ مِنَ الْعُبَّادِ خَالِي I'm going to revise it and say وَمَسْجِدُكُمْ مِنْ صَيْحَةِ الْحَقِّ خَالِي Jaljalatul Al-Amar. Every day you go to the masjid, oh, we're collecting donation for a new masjid. Jaljalatul Al-Amar. The bricks are going up. The masjid are going up. وَلَكِنْ أَيْنَ صَوْتٌ مِنْ بِلَالِ Where's the voice of Bilal? Where's the voice of Bilal? When a calamity happens to them, they're quick and eager to condemn it. When a calamity happens to a believer, Wallahi, you look left and right. Is there any help? No. When a calamity happens to them, everybody is for condemning it. When a believer is oppressed in a prison or there's a situation of the ummah ongoing, give me one. We need one. We need one to speak about it. وَلَكِنْ أَيْنَ صَوْتٌ بِنْ بِلَالِ The minarets go up in every, in every town, in every city, in every uh, township. وَمَسْجِدُكُمْ مِنْ صَيْحَةِ الْحَقِّ خَالِي The masjid from the word of truth is empty. And that is the sad situation of the ummah. I think it's time for salah. So we'll have salah insha'Allah ta'ala.